I think as entrepreneurs, you know, you put so much focus on the business and it's easy to neglect the family and you wake up one day and you got money in the bank, but chaos at home. For us being able to see the way that we have invested in intimacy of those relationships, especially with ourselves, with each other, and with our kids has actually been rocket fuel for our business. Tell them a little bit about yourself, your family dynamic. I just heard not too long ago, we're all curious, I'm super curious. You have 10 kids and I wanted to know how. I mean, <laughs> how? Well, I mean, without getting yeah, to, you know okay. what I'm saying? Oh, okay. How do you guys Where manage you doing from? all, yeah. The how part I got down, that part. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, when you say 10 kids, even hearing that, it's like, wow, that's nuts. Who would do that? Totally. Right. So it's not, it hasn't even like set in for us. But yeah, we have 10 kids, uh, same mom, same dad, no twins. Because that's usually the next question. Wow. Yep. We got married very early, so Amory was 18 and I was 21. I didn't know he was going to tell that part. <laughs> yeah. And we knew we wanted to have a big family. That was always important. We both come from sort of big families. She's five siblings, I'm seven in, in my family. But we thought at the time, you know, a big family was like five. Right. But uh, we, we sort of just took them one at a time. There may have been a few that were unplanned. <laughs> you know, we felt like God was telling us that there were more to come to our family and we felt like we kept having capacity to love on another baby and we, each one we've wanted and welcomed and, and they're all unique and different, but we, we love them all so much. It's a lot of work. Yeah. So imagine. like we have our business and then we have Home Inc, we call it, mm -hmm. which is like another business mm -hmm. because there's so many moving parts. But we're very intentional. Like we want to do parenting well. We want to do family well. Uh, our marriage is a huge priority for us. So we put mm -hmm. a lot of attention and effort into our marriage too. Mm -hmm. And so like one of the things that we like to talk a lot about is um, I think as entrepreneurs, you know, you put so much focus on the business and it's easy to neglect the family and you wake up one day and you got money in the bank, but chaos at home. Mm. And we've gone Not through that it. phase yep. a little, right? But we're very intentional now about real success and real happiness is not just the bank account, but really your relationships. And, and so with each other and with our kids, we, we really try to make that a big priority in our lives. Oh, that's awesome. Like, I, there's not that many parents that are putting that emphasis on both the financial side and making sure that home is taken care of. Mm -hmm. And is there going to be any more? No. Ten? Or do you guys? Well, <laughs> no. she's pregnant. No, no announcements. But we've also found that the intensity that we were putting into our business and kind of transferring over some of those lessons of intensity in the ways that we were pressuring and pushing ourselves with the size family. Everybody kind of recognizes doing really intense things really does grow you up. And for us, I think the size family that we've had has kind of been our Everest. And we've been yeah. able to see a lot of the ways that being parents have really pushed us to confront all of our skill sets. And we've watched how developing operations and systems within the business and then developing operations and systems within our relationships. Mm -hmm. And something we love to talk about is your ROI, as in your return on intimacy. Oh, and so for mm -hmm. us, being able to see the way that we have invested in intimacy of those relationships, especially with ourselves, with each other, and with our kids has actually been rocket fuel for our business. Yeah. But then also, you know, your business is not what validates you. It's the experience that you have in your life that we're all trying to create. And so sometimes pressuring yourself to do these big, non-familiar kinds of things, even like having this many children, for us, it's just grown us up really yeah. good and pushed us to the max because when you have a couple kids and you're messing it up mm -hmm. you can kind of wing through it but like if you don't figure out some laundry system for 10 <laughs> kids like clothes will take over your house yeah. oh so my gosh. It's, yeah. everything is amplified right yeah so Every you little have thing. to you have yeah. to just like you guys know when your business gets to a point and you have to you have to scale right and so it's been really fun to be able to kind of share some of the things that we've learned from going so big and seeing the way other people can apply those things when you have, you know, a smaller number of kids. So yeah, so you have to have SOPs for your family. Exactly, and that's what we call them. Yeah, we have yeah. different departments, and we understand some of our most important hires are for things that we do in our home. We're not doing all of it ourselves, and with homeschooling, and yeah, you know, we're gonna it's get the to that same sure. as in your business. Like you've got to really think about your team and your own capacity and doing the things that you're the most passionate. At. How is it to manage massively successful businesses in your own respects and also managing, you know, having kids? 
Well, not easy, and we don't always do it right or perfect. We look at the home and we try to treat our home no different than we would a business, which is if I want my business to run well, I gotta have a good team and I gotta have to have good processes and we all have to be aligned and on the same page with the same vision. So we spend a lot of time, my wife calls it pre-teaching, just building the culture that we wanna have and having those conversations with our kids. Every morning there's dedicated time with the whole group, like all the kids, and then they break out and do their own things because they're all at different levels, right? So right. some of them have tutors and, and helpers. What's the age range of the kids? All of them. No, but I'm saying, what's the age range? All of the youngest them. and what's the All of them. Oldest? <laughs> so 23 down to two. So our oldest two are out of the house. So we have eight still at home. With that though, like if we want our home to run smoothly, we can't think that we can neglect it and it's just gonna somehow all work out. Yeah, we know that about investing, right? You don't get a return unless you do an investment. And so you have to, especially with the desire for intimacy at the same time as growing a business, which they really do actually coordinate, like our favorite term is compartmentalizing. And so when it's time to be with family, you're 100% with family, like 100% with the kids. Or we have this system of couples time every morning and it's like super cheesy and we goo goo gaga look each other in the eyes and we go for a walk. And that's our time where everything else goes away and we're just about our marriage. Or when it's school time, we're just about school time. Or when it comes time for either one of us to be in a working mode, mm -hmm. then we don't feel bad because we're really intentionally prioritizing and telling our kids when we're present with you, we're 100% there and we don't feel guilty then when it's time to 100% be into the business. Yeah. And I think when we're trying to do too many things at one time, and maybe that's what people think, when they see with as many kids as we have that we're trying to do babies at the same time, well, I don't have our babies with us you know, on stage right now. We've got systems put into place. They, we were doing school this morning in the hotel. And it's just really intentionally reverse engineering, like what Jerry was talking about, the parts of our life that we intentionally are totally fine and have no guilt about putting into business, and the parts of our family that are totally 100% about connection with our kids or connection as a couple. So what's your guys' thought when it comes to education. I know that you mentioned homeschooling. I know that you guys are very heavy also on that, but I'll start with the Nortons again. One of the reasons why we homeschool is as we've kind of designed our ideal lifestyle, that included a lot of travel. If travel's part of your lifestyle, you really can't do that if you're following the school system because you gotta, you know, you're gonna vacation when everybody vacations and you only get these certain windows of time. And so we really didn't like that idea for one. When my wife first wanted to homeschool, and we've been doing it a long time, about what, 14, 15 years? Long time. 16. Okay. <laughs> so when we started, she came to me, she said, I, I, think I, I think I want to homeschool. And I'm like, I don't know. No, that's not, I don't think that's a good idea. And she's like, we'll be able to travel whenever we want. I know how to talk. Jerry Mike said, I'm like, I'm in, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like a great idea. I love it. So people tell me all the time, like, well, I want to travel. I want to travel. And I'm like, well, if you want to have a family, you have to homeschool. You cannot be a traveling family without homeschool. We feel like that is real world. We call it real world schooling. Yeah, we just came back from Europe. Yeah. Now when we travel, we often go in groups. So we don't take all the kids. We'll take groups. Um, sometimes we'll take them all. Like this trip, we have. <laughs> I can't, I can't how do you choose who you're going to take? I'm running around right I can't now. imagine how much that is. Who, make, who made the cut? Whoever the favorite yeah, who made is the of cut. the week. Whoever's the most annoying stays home. <laughs> yeah. You know, that, that okay. week. I love it. We went to Europe for 10 days. We took two of the kids. And it was really hyper-focused time with mm. just them. It was amazing. And them getting, like, they don't normally hang out. It was like the 16-year-old girl with the 11-year-old yeah. boy. Mm. So on purpose, you know, they're not naturally going to hang out together. But if I pull them away to Europe... Yeah. And they kind of don't have any other siblings and there's not the distraction of friends. You know what Jerry talked about in his presentation today when you're lying on your deathbed and you're thinking, what did I do the experiences that I wanted to create in my life? Connection and having a support between siblings, you know, obviously between us also, was super important. And so when we looked at it and we realized the systems that needed to be put in place, that travel was a huge way to really foster connection. I got to grow up in Europe, actually. So I got to have a very diverse perspective culturally growing up. And that was something that we wanted our children to be able to have. Just being able to decide and choose specifically for us and our family. And not everybody's going to have the same recipe, but being able to have the control and choose. And it's really affords is just being able to 
create the kind of awareness that you want with your family and be able to teach them about the things that you want to or to be able to have the time and the space to kind of cultivate those learning experiences, whether it's with a book or whether it's with travel. We're able to talk about entrepreneurship. We're able to talk about faith. We're able to talk about having an abundance mindset of a growth mindset versus facts and just stuff memorization. that memorization, stuff that Surrey can tell us. Right. You know, the world <laughs> has changed, but we are creating the on-purpose life experience that we want for our family. So we do all of our school by noon, and then we're able to play all afternoon, whether we're in Puerto Rico and we're at the beach or we're in Montana and we're up in the mountains. So we really concentrate that time in the morning and just, just like we do and talk about with our business, you just concentrate all the helpers that we can get and that we need. And I'm working side by side with all of them and making sure that that's happening in the way that we want. And I love that. I love sharing with them, with the kids, what I love, and I also love outsourcing the subjects that I don't love. We're, we're all Christian here, so how does that play a role in your, in your family? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. The, the thing is, is uh, Emma and I were talking about this this morning while we were getting ready for the day. You know, whatever outcome we're hoping for with our kids, whatever values we hope that they take on, those have to be values that we wholeheartedly embrace and live, because it's not what we say, it's what we do. Mm -hmm. And so if we can model that really well, this is our faith, this is what we believe in, these are our values, not just saying it, but them seeing us do that on a consistent basis, that's the only way we could ever hope that maybe they'll embrace those same values. Now they have their own agency, they gotta make their own choices, maybe they do, maybe they don't. Mm -hmm. But what her and I talk about all the time is, when we have a, a, a kid fly the coop and leave, can we both look at each other and look in the mirror and say, we feel really good about how we showed up. Maybe they embrace that, maybe they don't, and that's- That's our journey. That's not anything on us, that's on them, because right. they have to choose. Yeah. But can we feel good about the way we showed up? Mm -hmm. I feel like parenting is more about every day looking in the mirror and saying, mm -hmm. do I have integrity around the way that I'm being a parent? Mm -hmm. And if I don't, what changes do I need to make? Yeah. I was talking to some people in the, in the hall today, and uh, all our kids were running around, and. Mm -hmm. And um, he was asking me questions about, you know, like, how do you build the relationships? And I said, if I want my 16-year-old daughter to want to spend time with me, that starts when they're this age. And I pointed to my three-year-old. And you don't think that as a parent oftentimes. You think, especially as entrepreneurs, you're like, well, every time I come in the room, they run and hug me. So I can ignore them and I can be traveling all week and I can be working all week. And they just, they just love me unconditionally because they know how great I am. Hmm. Well, it doesn't stay that way. Right. And if you want teenagers to be involved in your life, which we do, that's important to me and important to Anne-Marie, if I wanna have a close relationship with them, it's, it's not just the quality, it's the quantity, and it starts when they're really little. That's when you're really successful in any area in life is when you have integrity and you feel that you're doing the very best, mm -hmm. goodest you know, thing that you can do for your own sake and for others' sake. I think especially literature, I mean, Jesus Christ taught through parables, and he was the best teacher that the planet's ever had. Yeah. To just give a story, we can hear the story of the prodigal son, and there can be takeaways that where kids will relate to the son or parents that are relating to the dad, or you have different times in your life where the principles that are woven within that story, they come alive to you. And integrating prayer, living our lives in a way that shows the abundant mindset. The abundant mindset is a faithful mindset. It's a hopeful mindset. And just showing the gratitude that we have and living in a way that is based in abundance and, and is based in faith, you know, you, do, you integrate that into your life, but I think the systems, especially of drawing on as many stories, whether it's from other entrepreneurs and su successful people or classic literature, and just honing in and drawing as much attention to these meaning frames of, a life that has purpose, a life that has intention, bringing our kids back to Europe. I'm a Dutch, my dad was born in Holland, bringing our kids back to their roots and showing them where they came from and the meaning frames that their ancestors took and the culture in Holland and how that's impacting them and the Christianity of their ancestors and how that's affecting their life for good and helping them actually be able to talk about it, I think has been you know, they're gonna do with it what they do, what they want to, right. but that's what we're feeling like is the way that we wanna show up.